social security benefits, and the important information just released that we need to understand. Also, I do have some other very important information I want to talk through with you in this video, so let's get into it right now. But if you're new here or if you haven't done so yet, make sure to subscribe by hitting that button right down below the video as it's totally free to do so and I'm here for you every single day with all the latest details as information is changing very rapidly right now and I want to help out everybody in this community in any way that I possibly can. So again, thank you so much for your support. I truly do appreciate it. Please hit that subscribe button right down below if you haven't done so yet and let's get right into the update. All right, so really quickly, let's run through a couple updates here that I want you to know about because this should help out a lot of people. All right, so the IRS is going to be opening up their local offices, about 35 offices across the country on some select Saturdays here over the next few months to help out people with their questions on tax preparation, tax refunds, and all kinds of different things. So even if you are a non-filer and you find yourself that you may need to file a tax return this year, you might want to check this out as they are taking walk-ins. <laughs> they don't usually do that, right? Usually you need to get an appointment, but with these select Saturdays that they're going to be opening up, it is specific for those people who have direct questions that they want to ask the IRS on their tax returns, tax refunds, stuff like this. You can just walk right in and they should be able to help you out. One th quick thing though, I will tell you all the dates that they'll be opening up their offices, but I would say check out your local office just to make sure that they are one of them that will be participating in these select Saturdays. All right, so with that being said, let me tell you the, the dates here that they'll be opening up their doors and allowing you to walk in on a Saturday. All right, so February 12th, March 12th, uh, April 9th and May 14th. These are all Saturdays and they'll be opening up their offices those days. So if you're interested, check it out. If not, that's totally cool too. But I want to let you know just in case you are somebody that wants to take advantage of that. Also, let's quickly talk about a new report that was just released by the Personal Capital Wealth and Wellness Index. Sounds pretty fancy, right? <laughs> yeah, I agree. It does sound pretty fancy. But what does it actually mean? Now, here's what they found. Right now, 53% of people would be able to pay for an unexpected $500 charge or bill without any worries. In other words, what this means is that 47% of the people, of Americans, so basically a half of the Americans, a little less than half of the Americans out there right now, would not be able to pay a $500 unexpected bill or charge without having tremendous worries about everything going on. Yeah. Yeah, that's kind of a sad situation, right? So basically half the people out there would not be able to come up with $500 in the event something happens. Your furnace breaks, your air conditioner breaks. Well, hopefully you're not running the air right now anyway, considering it's pretty cold around the entire country. But my point is $500. That is not a very big threshold for a lot of people to have right now. Therefore, a lot of people are kind of hanging on by a thread. It's kind of a sad situation, right? Again, uh, a lot of this is being attributed to all this massive inflation going on lately. Now, again, I know we've talked about inflation a lot recently, but the deal is it's a fact of our lives right now. There's not much we can do about it. And it is something that is literally impacting everybody from north to, to south, from east to west, all across the country. It is everybody in this country that is being impacted by inflation right now. So it's certainly something that we want to continue watching and paying attention to very closely. All right, so let's quickly talk about Social Security benefits and yet again, another new report that just released some very shocking information. But again, I don't think a lot of us are going to be all that surprised by all this information. So let me lay this out for you. According to a new AARP, AARP, I think all of us know about that, right? Yeah, <laughs> all of us know about AARP. But anyway, in accordance with a new report just released by AARP, they're now finding that the average Social Security beneficiary is spending, get this much, $6,168 every single year on medical premiums and medical service expenses. That's a lot. Here, get this much as well. Here in 2022, the average Social Security beneficiary is getting $1,657 each and every month, which translates into just under $20,000 per year. Now, we'll come back to this here in just a second, so hang with me. Just under $20,000 per year in benefits. However, based on that of $6,168 per year in medical premiums and expenses, that translates into 31% or thereabouts in uh, the amount of money that you're getting from Social Security every single year being spent on 
um, your medical expenses. So basically one third of your monthly income, or sorry, your annual income is pretty much being spent on medical premiums, medical services, medical expenses. That is a huge percentage. However, that's based on the average social security beneficiary. Again, $1,657 every single month. Well, let's be real. There's a lot of you in this community I know for a fact are not getting $1,657 per month because I see it down below in the comment section. Again, please don't tell me what your benefit is. I don't need to know that. It's not my business. But my point is, over the course of the last two years that I've been talking about this stuff very closely and I've been watching it, I've seen a lot of people leave their benefit amount down below. And I would say, based on what I've observed, the average benefit right now is probably anywhere between about $700 and $900. Again, it's kind of a tight range, but that's, I would say, on average, the average beneficiary in this community is probably receiving about $700 to $900. Again, just kind of the range that I've seen out there right now. So with that being said, if that is the average benefit, the average beneficiary is getting, what, $9,000 to maybe $12,000 a year in benefits? Again, so if we run the same calculation, you're spending about 50% of your income every single year on medical expenses. That is huge. That leaves barely anything for somebody to live on when it comes to rent, utilities, phone bill, cable bill, um, heating, you know, electricity, gas, gas in your car, insurance, uh, yeah, like insurance for your for your vehicle, um, all the other things that you need, right? Food. I mean, everybody would like a little bit of food, right? I'm, I'm pretty sure anyway. Uh, my point is, without these other programs like SNAP benefits or utility assistance, rental assistance, all of these other things, honestly, it would be almost impossible for somebody to get by. And again, I see it down in the comment section all the time where some of you in this community are not eligible for some of these other benefits, whether it's rental assistance, utility assistance, SNAP benefits, things like this. And you're saying, hey, I, I, I'm scraping by here. I don't know how I can continue like this. It is so tough right now. So I feel like all of this is just once again, uh, leading to the point where additional stimulus checks, monthly guaranteed basic income, something like this would be necessary for the low income and the fixed income. In fact, in many of the reports that I've been reading, as you know, if you've been watching the videos for a while now, you know that I read all kinds of stuff every single day on all these reports. I've been seeing all this talk about guaranteed basic income, in other words, monthly checks going out, and how they would be so incredibly beneficial for the low income, and they even mentioned fixed income beneficiaries, how all of these individuals would be prime candidates for monthly checks. Yeah, I think all of us can agree. Pa, yeah, definitely. We can certainly agree that uh, we would all be perfect, perfect candidates for monthly checks. So again, even if it just translated into $250 a month, $300 a month, something like this, that would be life-changing for a lot of people. In a lot of instances, that would probably be just enough to cover some of your premiums for your medical expenses, for your um, medical expenses, as far as like service expenses, things like this. It might be just enough to offset it just enough to make sure that you have enough to get by each and every month rather than, you know, spending all your benefit on rent and utilities and then trying to figure out where you're gonna get a couple hundred dollars for groceries and the other expenses that you have throughout the course of the month. Yeah, so we're kind of in a weird situation right now, right? So it's like the obvious um, situations are here as in everybody knows what needs to be done, but yet Congress, for some very weird, confusing reason, hasn't decided to do anything yet. But again, we're watching that very closely. So anyway, I want to let you know what I found out here. Some very interesting reports. Again, if you're somebody who has any questions on your tax returns, if you find yourself in a situation where you need to file a tax return for some reason this year, I know that there's a lot of you that are non-filers, but if you find yourself in the position where you need to file and you have questions, again, if you want to walk into one of your local offices, check that out on those dates I mentioned earlier. Again, February 12th, March 12th, April 9th, and May 14th, the uh, offices will be open. Those are Saturdays and taking walk-ins. So again, check your local office just to make sure that they will, are, will be one participating in this. Um, but again, hope that helps you out. So again, thanks so much for being here. I really do appreciate you. I'm here on your behalf every single day doing whatever I possibly can. I know this time is hard right now and I truly just wanna be here for you in any way that I can be. So again, thanks so much for your continued support. We're all here together. We're all one big family. I mean, seriously, we're all in this right now and uh, just gotta stick together through this. So again, I'm here for you. Thanks again for watching. Subscribe down below if you haven't done so yet. 
share this video or any others here on the channel. Make sure to go back and check out some of the other 2,100 videos right here on the channel. There's a lot of really good ones and there's a lot of really embarrassing ones. So let's be real with ourselves right now, <laughs> right? But that's okay. I have no problem making a fool of myself. I do it all the time and uh, why not do it again, right? So anyway, some of the videos will offer some pretty good laughs on my behalf. So if you feel free, go back and check out some of those. Um, otherwise, make sure to stay tuned. Corey, my wife, will be back here in just a minute with the new updated list of shout outs for the names that are pulled right out of the fan club. If you want to check that out, there's a link in the description. Otherwise, if not, that's totally cool too. Doesn't matter at all. But if you want to join the list for the shout outs, check that out. Otherwise, Corey, take it away and I'll catch you again later in the next update. And thanks for watching. I'll see you soon. See ya. Today, we are shouting out Nancy Wiggins, John Floyd, May Johnson, Alan Venice, Anna Owens, Clifford Mariner, and Marietta Jennings. Thank you for being members of the fan club.